West Point, New York. It's Patriot League basketball. The top team in the league. Boston University makes their first trip to West Point in more than 20 years to meet Army. A look at the standing shows the Terriers in position to clinch at least a share of the league title with a win here tonight. Win Saturday at Holy Cross, and they get the number one seed in the league tournament. And if the Black Knights win out, they get a chance to host an opening round game here of the conference tournament. Hello again, everyone. Ray Crawford here with Chris Spatola. And what I think we're eager to see is how the Terriers are going to respond after a shocking loss to Bucknell at home on senior day. An opportunity here for this team to get back on track. They need energy to have success, and it starts with Maurice Watson, Jr. It does. Your point guard, that's where it all starts. And I'll tell you what, this kid can really play. You see, he's only a sophomore, but such a mature game for a point guard. He really gets in the paint. They score a lot of points, does Boston University. And it starts with him. He sets the table for all these other guys a dynamic very big basket for army keep this a two possession game ferguson now with he's had a heck of a game huh? right. unreal 18 points back door that's dom morris and one well, we'll see that again i mean it's just on the roll dom morris and we've seen so many nice passes to rolling big guys here tonight you see Morris off this dribble handoff, just goes to the basket. And Ferguson stays with that ball handler up top. Nobody rotates over. And look, if you're gonna foul a guy, I don't know if I'd I don't know if I'd foul him. <laughs> I'd Might come out on the worst end of it. I was gonna say, if you're gonna foul a guy, you gotta make sure he doesn't score the basket. But with this guy at the line said in the first half he's six seven but the more important measurement is at 240. well i made the comment today during practice to the coach i said hey you know he looks like a football player he's very broad very broad in the shoulders and it's almost kind of like funny that i mentioned that i mean it is something that he's contemplated here's papali another three he is red hot john papali cannot be stopped from three perfect five for five from three. UC ends up with the basketball. They're looking to get inside. Nothing there right now. It's Marley Hills block. Double team. Now they kick it back. Anna Owens is back. That one's a little too short. And a turn bringing it down for Memphis. Williams. There we go. We haven't heard much of Taylor Williams so far, and she got that 15 foot of the ball. Anna Williams played the play a little bit. She was expecting her man to come off the ball screen, and she repositioned herself, and her player turned down the ball screen and was able to get to the basket and score. Memphis now with a five point lead, 27 22. Chelsea Jameson, the original starting five in there for UC. Quisenberry tried to get something in the lane. Nothing was there. With five seconds of the shot clock, they lose the handle. Jasmine Whitfield can't convert, and it goes right back to Memphis. You see doing a better job of getting the ball in the middle of the court to attack that zone. Got it. Now, since you got it, what are you going to do with it? Brings up second down. You're in the red zone. You definitely want to come away with points here. Shot of Rob Clock. Just sticking to what he knows. Trips to the right here with the Falcons offense. Schaefer with the carry and this time. Bishop McDevitt will be extremely stingy coming up to make that initial hit for Bishop McDevitt. Uh, was a host of pairs. Kamari will be credited with the tackle. Tonight brings up a big third down, and again, you know, you, you, you want to see if you can get something going. Hatal, which is, he's, he's dressed, but he's definitely not in the game. So there is something with him that, that right now, they don't want him run, running the ball at this point. So it could be an injury that's keeping him out. Um, so that, that is a big hit for them. Yeah, with him playing both ways, delivering some of the hits that he does. Uh, we knew he had his shoulder pads off there later in the second half, first half. Fuck. His pass is going to be intercepted. And McDevitt's going to get the ball back. Crucial turnover. And we'll take another look at it again. What was Clock doing? He rolls here. He got pressure. And that was Marcico. Alex Marcico comes over and he's able to make the play from his defensive back position. A one handed interception. Oh, Marcico and reels it in. Beautiful catch with the one hand. Alex Marcico Good play. pulls it in. 
absolutely beautiful play, and right when Bishop and Devitt needs a play, they come up with a massacre. And, and that negates that. that yeah, I tell you what, we, a couple games we have covered of this guy, he is, he is a trooper. He is. He's an all. He, he's made my all steel mill team. I want to go out there and give him a hard helmet. Third down and four. Ball on the 10 yard line. 9.56 to go. Schaefer with the carry on the left side. Schaefer's going to stay on his feet. Touchdown, Lower Dolphin. Boy, oh boy, how about the big sophomore here with the throwback look coming in? He's been a workhorse too tonight. He definitely has. And again, North, good north south runner. Uh, he's filling in pretty nicely for Hatal, which remember, Hatal is just a superstar. So him coming in. And you always got to tell you guys, next man up, your backups have to be prepared because you never know. Football injuries are guaranteed. So it's just a matter of time. So you got to make sure that the backups are prepared. Coach Clock made sure that his backup was prepared. And we're seeing a coming out party by Brendan Schaefer. 21-14, 949 to play. We'll be back after these messages. A chance to stop the freedom on a third and three, first play of the fourth quarter. Ryan is in motion. Smith keeps it himself, and he's got a first down. I tell you what, Warren Smith. Warren Smith. I got to give him credit because Old Pitts was coming hard at him. He knew to tuck and he knew to duck. First and goal for Trenton at the stand. Let's take a look at Pitts coming from his backside, ready to hit him. You get an opportunity to nail quarterback in arena football. You put pressure on the quarterback. You hit him when you can. That's why you're not seeing Warren Smith with too many keepers tonight. He's a smaller arena football quarterback. He's shifty. Man, you get one of these D-backs coming up and hitting you, they'll lay the wood on you. They are now three of five on third down conversions. First and goal. Smith got a little time. Now he kind of lobs it up in the air. Oh, man. Roger Jackson Warren was Smith wide open. Off by number three, Roger Jackson. And Jackson goes into touchdown. the stands to give one of his fans a hug. That is the player who got hurt at the beginning of the game. Yeah, that was that's Muhammad Dean. He went up and gave, gave Dean a hug. But look, that was just miscommunication, Greg. If you look at the secondary, just miscommunication, snuck him out. I'm telling you, the quarterback is hard to pick up because he's size. I'm down here on level. You can't see where he's coming from, and I think that's where that misdirect or that, that communication secondary came from. Leo with a snap. Puts it right through the uprights. Well, this is almost like a last man standing kind of game, and that often happens in indoor football. But you see how the New York Chad, that's the first time all game that you saw you saw Cooper use his body well, where the ball was flipped over, he was sideways on, he saw the ball coming, got his body in there, did a great job. See, at that point, you saw him stand him up ready, but what you didn't see was when the ball was in flight, he got his body in between the defender and the ball, and he slowed the play down enough to receive the ball to create that 1v1 opportunity. The little nuance of what he just did now either creates the opportunity or it's a turnover. That was brilliant work by him, even though it wasn't a result in the back of the net, but it was, a, it was great work by him. Small things, the small things. Long ball driven here for Artiega. Artiega trying to get their brand, gets a foot on it, but Artiega with it still for New York. Artiega sprinting in, drives it near the back post, and that one's knocked away by Noble. Noble looked like he got run into by Duckett, and Noble, Noble is down now for the Islanders. I think he took an elbow or Red something from Duckett as he's running in, but what a great Artiaga. play here. Artiega just winning this ball from Brandt, and he's gonna drive it as hard as he can across the front here. Noble dives out, and no, actually there was a collision right there with number 10, Bellucci. Fans, did you see the new one committed ball? ball. Commercialized he came Rampica out, Jersey. He committed Scarf, himself to it. Absolutely brilliant work by no less. And, and, and a and great strike by RTA. You get down there, you want to drive it as hard as you can and just look for the flick on or the redirect. And uh, Noble saw that and come out on it. But a great run by RTA to win that ball from Grant. What? You got that one. Here's. What do you mean? They all did. Here's Mangione now for the blast over to Donna Kelly. Noon. Some pressure here from the Lancers. They'll play it back to the keeper. Here come the Lancers after that. And it helps to create a turnover and a chance right out in front for Pedrinho. 
couldn't turn on it. Blast now getting a chance to come back. They want a handball called on looking land. No call for it coming. I think Salas is complaining that Mike had an But SMU is coming up on Sacramento. Will Sacramento hold off SMU as they begin to pull away from San Diego State? Central Florida still, last 250, solid length in front. Tulsa, solid second. Sacramento third with SMU on their sixth seat. Sa SMU's bow ball is on Sacramento's sixth seat. Central Florida opening up to a deck open water lead. Tulsa, clearly second. Sacramento pulling away again. Their coxswain is on SMU's bow ball. Now their stern is on SMU's bow ball. San Diego is doing everything they can to hang on in this race. But in the lead, Central Florida rowing away with a length of open water is across the line first. Tulsa second. Sacramento third. SMU four. San Diego State fifth. And Villanova six. And with that, we conclude the American Championship. And the award ceremony will be at trying for the 80. Let's see what kind of strategy Derek Braun comes up. Uh, the classes, other than the big jump and the 
round three, where the rider can only ride one horse. That gives them a more equal level playing field here tonight. And some of our supporting classes, they are able to ride two horses. And you've seen some of these riders, Mr. Derek second now. They give them a little bit of an advantage because they've already been in the ring. See what works, what doesn't work. Derek had 850 points in his first ride, Calypso Z. just coasting around here. He's going to run out of time here in five seconds. The 5.30. So just kind of cantering, coasting back through the finish line, 5.30. Well, he, he walked La Carolas right up to the fence as if he wanted to uh, Give him a little look there. <laughs> Take a look at that. Look at that cash sign right there. Sneak peek. Yeah. It'd be nice if they were jumping for uh, each each fence that the, the the money allotted or another zero on all the things. So what, someday we'll be doing that. Got a look and it worked. Okay. So a thousand sixty for Derek Braun. Let's go back to Alicia. All right, guys. I'm with Laura Chappelle. You just finished riding. Talk about the horse you were on. He's the spicy, or she, you tell me. He, uh, Bradbury, he's a, he's a speed specialist. He won the class like yesterday. Fortunately, we had a real bad luck today. I think he just wasn't sure uh, where he was going to the second fence. He tried to recover from there. At least he jumped the joker. He's still in it for a prize right now. Talk a little bit about that. How soon did you know he may have been a little out of sorts? Well, uh, you know, usually he sights in on that, those angles pretty well. Um, I was a little surprised that he didn't catch on to that right away, but so early in the course, that's a bit of a hard thing to ask. So um, what was your strategy like? As soon as you feel like that, he may be a little out of sorts. Do you do anything differently or just push him, or what do you do? Well, I just wanted to give him a few more uh, confident jumps uh, in there, try and get a few points here and there, and uh, make the best recovery we could. How do you like coming to Harrisburg? Uh, Harrisburg's great. Best indoor horse show. So awesome. Hey, thanks for taking the time, Laura. All right, take care. Greg?